looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Welcome to Moving Through Midlife. I am your host, Courtney, a personal trainer and movement specialist who wants to help you move through midlife with more grace. Each week, we will discuss ways we can show up better for ourselves and our children without the burnout. We will focus on overall health through habit stacking to help increase energy, provide movement snacks to help you move more throughout the day while also moving your body more, and learn from professionals on moving through midlife with ease so that you can feel confident with aging gracefully. Grab your earbuds and join me on a leisurely walk while we discuss moving through midlife. Today, I'm sharing with you three ways to work on strengthening your lower abs. So anytime you start podcast, you're always thinking about like, what's that very first thing I want to say? And so I went back to what are some of the questions you all ask me a lot? And this is one I get quite often because what happens is for many of us, whether you um, are newly postpartum or going through perimenopause, you're going to deal with what you all say, well, what your lower abs are, or also known as that low belly pooch or the mummy tummy. Lots of different ways of describing it. And they can all be handled the same way. They all may be happening for different reasons that I'm going to talk about a little bit. But depending on where you are on your journey, we're all going to work on them the same way. And I will always start with two things, your posture and your breathing. And here's why. So a lot of you may have tried um, different ab workouts, which are great. And there are so many different ideas out there for exercises you can do to strengthen your abs. Here's why I wouldn't start there. One, depending on how you sit and move throughout the day, you can do that 30-minute core workout. But then when you're getting up and you're moving, if you tend to be one who rounds forward through the shoulders and are gripping down with your upper abs, you will be creating pressure down, which in turn puts um, a lot of pressure on that lower belly and you will end up with the low belly pooch. It has to do with your posture. The other one is where you're breathing. And if you are doing certain exercises and you are not breathing properly through those exercises, you may be creating more pressure down or out on your abdominal wall. So those are where I start with any of my programs. We start with your breathing and we start with your posture, and then we start to move into these other things. Now, yes, for some of you, you may be able to do some of the exercises and you will start to notice a change. You may not have a problem with breathing. You may have um, a breathing pattern that is working the diaphragm effectively, which is also working the pelvic floor effectively. So that may not be a problem for you. And then for some of you as well, sometimes it takes working through these core exercises to work on strengthening the abs and the core, I'm sorry, the abs, the back and the glutes, which will allow your posture to become better. So where you're standing a little bit more upright and able to move a little bit more efficiently because you're becoming stronger through your midsection. So it's not that it's not possible. I just like to incorporate breathing and posture into your daily life because I don't look at just what we can do in those 30 minutes. I try to look at things as how can we move more effectively throughout the day? So what is the first way we strengthen the low belly? 
we need to start with your breathing. Each time you breathe, your rib cage should be expanding fully so that the diaphragm can expand and air should be going down into the core, tapping the pelvic floor, and then coming back out and allowing the pressure within the core to actively work those pelvic floor muscles without creating added pressure down or out on the belly. We don't want to fully belly breathe as this doesn't provide full diaphragm expansion. So you may hear people say to take deep belly breaths. And yes, that is good for calming you down. The problem is, is when that's the only way you're breathing and you're not effectively working into your back. So I like to stop all of, or start all of my clients with back breathing first to start working on that full expansion of the rib cage. You also want to make sure that your ribs are moving in a 360 breathing pattern and breathing into the back and the sides all together. So I like to think of this like a jellyfish. So if you were to breathe in um, and you place your hands gently around your rib cage and if, imagine a jellyfish, how it moves all parts of the body equally. So when you breathe in, you should feel all parts of your ribs expanding into your hands. The front fingertips, you should feel it, the sides into the hand, and then your thumb would be wrapped around to the back and you should feel that as well. And I would say that for many of the women I work with, that is where they struggle the most. And once you start to feel the breathing moving into your back a little bit more, you're going to notice less tension and tightness in your mid to low back. So something else to really work towards doing. I am going to put um, a video for you or a link. Actually, let me do this. I'm going to put a link to the blog post that I have where you can go through all of this because I have quite a few videos. So it'd probably be easier to do it that way. The second way that you want to work on strengthening the lower abs is to focus on your posture. If you are slumping down with rounded shoulders, head jutting forward and ribs gripping down. So think about that posture many, so many people are in. They sit at their computer desk or they're sitting in their car and what's happening? Like you can feel kind of how your ribs are kind of pulling down. You feel how the weight um, is pulling down from your chest to your rib area. This is putting a ton of pressure down on your belly. And when, it, when this is occurring, it's either going to go out towards your abdominal wall. So think diastasis recti um, or into the pelvic floor or that low belly pooch. So we're going to need to work on strengthening those core muscles. And remember, your core is not just your abs, your core is going to incorporate your back, your glutes, your, uh, it can even move into, I mean, your core is not your hamstrings, but your hamstrings and your glutes work in conjunction with each other. So same as your inner thighs, your inner thighs are like the anchor to the pelvic floor, which I'm going to discuss in another podcast, but all of these things have to kind of work in conjunction. And you will hear me say this time and time again, that this, you need to look at all movements as a whole body approach. So if you are struggling with things occurring in your core, you can't just focus on your abs. You've got to look at the whole body, how the shoulders are moving, how the upper traps, so upper neck and back muscles, how those are working in conjunction because they can all be involved in the process. So we are going to then work on posture, and that is going to be um, simple techniques to work on strengthening your abs, strengthening your back, your glutes, all of that so that you're standing with better posture. And then the third way to strengthen the lower abs is to focus on how you are moving throughout the day. 
So whether you're doing a workout or picking up your child, sitting in a chair, whatever you're doing, you need to focus in on how you are sitting. So many people tend to either lean to one side or cross one leg over, always the other leg, that type of thing. Stand with one foot turned out, hips dropped into, like you're jutting into one of your hips. I'm thinking like when you have your child sitting on your side, we can all think of that image, how you kind of push into one hip and rest into it. All of these uh, things are affecting how your body continues to move. So we want to make sure that we are moving in ways to where that doesn't mean you can't cross your leg. It doesn't mean that you can't put your child on your hip. But if we're going to do those types of things, we need to make sure we do them on the other side. And in the beginning, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Why does it feel uncomfortable? Because you're not used to doing it. And therefore, like that should be your clue. Oh, things have changed. You know, my muscles have compensated in one way or another. Things might have elongated or shortened. So if it's uncomfortable, that probably means you need to do it a little bit more. So making sure to change the side with which you are moving. Um, And then that way you're not feeling like I've got to stand in perfect posture all day long because that is not what we are trying to do. That is not good as well. We should be mobile. We should be moving. We should be moving in our body in many different ways. And this pain, being cognizant of what you do throughout the day will help you to start moving in different ways. This also will relay into when you are working out making sure that you're paying attention to different things that are occurring in your body as you move and ensuring that you are bracing through your core. So not um, not like really stiff. You've got to think like what is, you know, if I'm lifting 10 pound weights, then I probably don't need to brace as much as if I'm lifting up a 50 pound child or, you know, a 40 pound child, whatever. Um, That may be a little bit different than how I'm going to brace when I lift up 10 pounds. So making sure that you understand that. And all of these things can start to occur naturally as you start moving more, starting to lift weight, starting to understand your body, starting to understand your posture and breathing. And all of this will start to work together in a nice way, not to where you're having to stress yourself out worrying about, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? It becomes natural. Our body is designed to move and move in a certain way. And you will, as you start to get used to that, you will start to notice that. Um, I'd love for you to join me over in the Moving Through Midlife group over on our fa- in Facebook. Um, I will be posting videos in there, helping you through things. It's a great way for us to connect, ask your questions. If you have specific questions, I'm able to help you a little bit more in there. Um, So make sure to check that out. And then also you can join us um, for our Transform Coaching Program, where I'm going to be diving deeper into posture and breathing and form and movement and strengthening. And then we also work on um, your your nutrition, your habits, all of that as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found something to take away to help you practice healthier habits, move more, or handle the midlife and aging with grace. If you enjoyed this episode, Please share it with a friend or leave us a review to help us reach more moms just like you. Head to movingthroughmidlife.com to join the free community or learn how you can move more and feel better in your daily life.